Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments with a continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And like I've said in previous videos, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. This is Excel challenge 440. Let's read the problem statement. It says, list the numbers between 1 to 100. Okay, there's a boundary there for us which can be represented as the sum of two perfect squares of natural numbers. Natural numbers don't include zero. Example is five, okay? Five can be expressed as one squared plus two squared, okay? If you look at 10, 10 can be expressed as one squared plus three squared. 13, two squared plus three squared. One thing you will notice is that the two numbers are not the same. When I say are not the same, X and Y are not the same. Because if they were, then you could have one squared plus one squared, which is two. But we don't have two in the results here. We could have two squared plus two squared, which will be four plus four, eight. We don't have that in here. So it means two criteria you will need to fill one. When you square and add them together, it should be less than 100. And the second is that the two numbers should not be the same. So keep that in mind as we build you know, our solution. I'm going to walk you through my solution, which is very similar to what most people posted on LinkedIn. I would show you using helper cells, then I'll try and do it in one cell, which is what I know a lot of you expect me to do. But once you get the logic of it in helper cells, then it's easier using one cell. So if we have two numbers x and y, basically we are saying here that x squared plus y squared is less than equals to 100. That's what it is, okay? So now the question is, X and Y, you know, what ranges are they? We know that the lowest it can be is 1, right? So if X is 1, for example, you know, Y cannot be 10. Why? Because once you say 1 and you take 1 out of 100, you're left with 99. So Y squared is less than equals to 99. So obviously, if Y is 10, the addition there will give us 101. Okay? So what it means is that for you to know the highest number you can have, you could do if that 100 was something that was dynamic, basically, that you wanted to always know, you know, where your upper boundary was, you could do square root of 100 minus 1, right? Okay, and whatever you have, you just take the int of it, you know, or basically rounding it down, okay? So it means that really, x and y would obviously be between 1 and 9. We can't have anything outside of that, okay? So now what I would do is I would create a sequence, you know, just use sequence function and create 1 to 9. This is spilling vertically. Okay, so that's that. And then I spill another one, you know, horizontally. Okay, so I put a comma to skip the rows, do this. So this is like my X comma Y. So I come in here and I go back to like what we used to do in primary school, what we call the times table multiplication table where X multiplies by Y, one times one, one times two. But no, here we are gonna do the square of this plus the square of this. The beautiful thing about dynamic arrays is that you can do it in one formula and in one fell swoop. So I can take this whole thing as my x, I square it, I do a plus, I take this whole thing as my y, I square it, okay? And then I have all these numbers. So it means all these numbers are the results of doing x squared plus y squared, okay? So this is everything. But we need to impose those two criteria on them. The first criteria is that one, the two numbers that produce this result should not be the same. And the second one is that it should be less than or equal to 100 in this case. Okay, so the first thing I could do is, okay, if these two numbers should not be the same, it means x should not be equal to y. I could decide to take this, you know, and multiply it by saying x is not equal to y. So what happens here? Anywhere x equals to y, you know, then you're going to have a zero, right? Because you're going to have a false. Because you're saying here, the condition you're using to test is that they are not the same. So if they are not the same, it will be a true, which when you multiply is a one. So it gives you basically the same result. But anywhere they are the same, this expression is going to result in a false and it's going to be a zero. And that's what will happen. Now, what you notice is that the only places where the two numbers are equal are on the diagonals, right? So this is one one this will be here two two here three three here so it means with what i've done here all the diagonals should become zero let's see okay so look at all the diagonals right so everything on the diagonal i mean you can see that they are all zeros okay so now that's one thing but what you notice again some of us who are always very curious when it comes to mathematics you probably notice a symmetry you know above this diagonal when i say a symmetry now just look well see you can see 5, 13, 25, 41, 61. Let me show you. They're also here. 5, 13, 25, 41, 61. 
okay and if you look at the other numbers too you see 10 20 34 52 you can see it here 10 20 34 52 which means that basically you're having the same numbers above and below the diagonal so there's really no need keeping both ultimately of course you know you need a unique list you know so you could say well leave them i could you know throw in a unique there and i will still get what i want but some people may say okay well we cannot as well just get rid of them you know immediately instead of keeping them and then waiting to use unique so it means that i can decide to discard any of the halves either the bottom half or the top half and i will still have all the numbers i need so instead of doing um you know what i've done here which is saying not equal to i could decide to do greater than for example so if i say one is greater than the other see the difference so you see now that everything on the diagonal and above is all zeros, right? And if I change this also and I say, well, I decide to use less than, you know, then it just switches. Everything on the diagonal and below, you know, becomes zero. But I still have all the numbers, you know, I want. Okay, so that's that. So I've kind of, you know, cleaned that up to this point. Then the next thing is I want to make sure that the numbers are what less than equals to 100. Okay, so I could also do another multiplication there, you know and this whole thing here this first expression is what results in what you are seeing i could decide to use a let but hold on on that so i'm testing and saying is this less than equals to 100 if i do this what happens wherever it is less than equals to 100 it gives me a true which is like one wherever it's not it gives me a false which is zero so let's do enter here okay so you can see that those numbers that were above 100 like here let's do a control z so you see you see all these numbers one two three right when you repeat so you can see they become zero so right now you have everything you want so you can now you know proceed from here so for you to be able to get a unique list it will be important to either make it one column of data or one row of data so you can easily remove the duplicate so what i would do is make it one column of data so i can use to call that's the beautiful thing about the new functions okay so i used to call and then to call brings everything into you know one column okay now I can strip out the duplicates using what's unique right and so i have you can see that even though i had a lot of zeros initially there's just one now then i can sort it okay so i sort okay so everything is sorted now the only thing is that this zero is not supposed to be there so i need to get rid of the zero okay so i could say well if i know that the zero would always result i could decide to use a drop you know i just say drop uh you know one row and i would have the result i want so that's one way to do it but the other way that most people did it and which i also you know kind of like is instead of going this route so let me just show you what will change there they take advantage of the fact that to call has an argument to ignore errors so instead of generating zeros they would rather generate errors so basically it's just like changing all these multiplications to division why when you do multiply by zero of course it gives you zero right but if you do divide by zero then it gives you a division by zero error so see what results is basically the same thing only that the zeros become division by zero okay so you see that it's basically the same thing all the zeros are now division by zeros so when you go to to call and you now do to call and you select this the second argument allows you to ignore errors you can use two or three so let's say we use three Okay, so you can see that now we don't have that zero. So basically, because the zero is now represented as an error, you know, it's been taken care of. So we can now do our, you know, sort and unique over this. Just basically following, you know, the same logic we used the first time. Okay, and then we have the result. Okay, so this may seem like it's more, you know, elegant. So you can decide to go this way. You can decide to go the other way. Many ways to skin a cat. Just understand where you are and, you know, where you're headed. So that's you know the solution but let's now try to do it in one cell <laughs> that's the interesting part okay so i'll start this off using a let and i can say let my x you know be sequence of nine in this case so i can return x just for you to see so that's my x okay i need to create another variable called y i can say y is sequence you know open the bracket comma nine or i could just say since this is a vertical array and i want to flip that to a horizontal array i could use two row i can say two row of x okay so what it means is that this is x you are seeing now two row of it is put it in one row let's see what that results in if you put y here okay so you see that's your y so and then you know your x okay so good 
so now let's create another variable which is like the result of you know doing the square so let's put z there and z here will just be x squared you know plus you know y squared that's not a plus <laughs> okay so that's x squared plus y squared so let's spew z and see what z looks like okay so it brings us back to the same place where we were that's just what we are doing we just multiplied the x's by the y's and we've gotten this okay so once we had that what was the next thing we did we divided z by say x is greater than y we did that so that we will ensure that the two numbers are never what the same so let's see what the result looks like okay so you can see we are back to the same point where we have the division by zero error the next thing we need to handle is numbers that are above 100 we want to you know as in trim them down so that to ensure that everything we are showing is just below 100 okay so we go again and we divide this time you know by our z is less than equals to 100 you know so basically this will say if it is less than equals to 100 it gives you a true if not it gives you a false so by the time you divide by zero again it gives you a division by zero error so every number here that is above 100 will become you know a division by zero error close the bracket okay so good so now that you have this what do you do with this whole expression you put it inside of a to call which is to bring it into one column so we do to call and we say inside of the to call don't forget we want to ignore what errors we can use two or three anyone is fine you know so let's say we use three to ignore errors okay so now we have everything we don't have any errors but you can see that of course you know it's not sorted and there's also a possibility of duplicates there may not be but well i never know so i may just say okay do a what do a unique <laughs> you know save myself the stress okay so this is unique all right and then i do a what i do a sort okay and then i close one bracket and that should be fine okay and basically i have the answer and that's it okay so sort unique to call and the other expressions but you see that it's not so difficult once you walk through the helper cells once you see how it works with helper cells it's easy you know to build it up this way and that's really you know the solution so if you like it please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out